It is a crucial lecture day. 102 participants from the three armed services, ministries and agencies, and other participants from 16 countries are eager to soak in brand new ideas on how to manage the media and public opinion at times like this. Outside the hall, bright and early at 9 a.m., Mr. John Mama, chairman of Channel's group, makes his way onto the grounds of the 28-year-old National Defense College, the apex military training institution for the Nigerian Armed Forces. Mr. John Mama is met by the college commandant, Rear Admiral Motala Bashir. Straight to the podium, Mr. Momo lays bare the critical role the media plays in molding public opinion, engendering national unity, and why the military must manage the media properly. In times of national crisis, the media can engage in an organized effort to shape public opinion. But without a positive attitude and good management of the media, even the best efforts of policymakers and governments would not have the best possible effects. The army's spokesman must keep his words. If he had promised to get back to the journalists who had approached him for clarification on a story he's dealing with, if this happens, the media is less likely to be antagonistic if they are treated with dignity. Although the military and the media view their mandates differently, Mr. Momo believes to manage public opinion successfully in times of conflict, the media should be given access to information and respond to requests for information on time. He ends the lecture by stating that if the military manages the media well, it will be able to manage public opinion successfully, urging the media to practice responsible journalism. Our stations, newspapers, or platforms should not give oxygen to enemies of our country who crave media publicity to survive and operate. We must, repeat, we must practice responsible journalism in the interests of our national security. Out from the podium to the interactive session, Mr. Momo fields questions from participants and faculty members on sharing sensitive military information with the media, the challenges with investigative journalism in Nigeria, and the challenge of an independent media in an era where many media houses are owned by politicians. We begin to see more and more of the kind of reportage that will come from these uh, institutions, for the most part, not balancing their stor stories, not being objective or tilted to one side, particularly those side of their ownership. So that's the way it goes. It is the regulator who has the function to make sure that things like this are checked from time to time. But as far as channels is concerned, um, we're very professional, and you can check us out in all that we do. A word of gratitude like brings to an end a rare small. interaction between and the top military time. personnel and a veteran media practitioner and entrepreneur. Uh, the, the commandant uh, of the college uh, is already thinking of plans the, to make this military the, media the, synergy the, seamless. Uh, as a government, we need to have an appropriate media infrastructure to adequately shape public opinion. And uh, based on the lecture, we can see that there is a direct relationship you know, between the two variables, media and public opinion. Uh, Building that synergy between the military and the media seems quite difficult, considering the fact that both agencies work at crosshairs. The military believing in secrecy and the media believing in openness. However, that synergy is one that has to be made, and that is the crux of the lecture here at the Nigerian Defense College. Uh, the chairman of the channel's media group make me clear that when there's a war, the first casualty is truth, and it is imperative on the media and the military to ensure that that truth survives. Kayla Megua, Channels Television News.